Welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in, watching, or listening, doing it. However you're doing it, where you're doing it. Did you see me try to Ash Ketchum and totally just... Is that what it was? I was, like, yeah. really confused for I was going to, like, do, you know, the... And it just didn't. Dun, dun, dun. Really didn't work. I will travel. I'm not, I'm not starting this now. Oh, we're not doing that? I can't jump Copyright strike. This. Guys, welcome exactly. to <laughs> episode 101. We are past the 100 episode mark. Ugh. Couldn't be more excited about it. Our rookie season's over, guys. Our rookie season's over. This is when it gets real. This is when <laughs> boys become men. Boys that, to men. Is that the phrase? Sure. That's a, Separates the men from the boys. A beautiful singing group. Um... <laughs> guys as if you, always if you were born you can think boys to men <laughs> oh man that's guys. a joke for the parents out there <sighs> this is a good start sorry what you want to say always, <laughs> uh these episodes are brought to you by cardsphere.com the best place to buy sell and trade cards online they're fantastic you can get buy list prices there their link is down in the description mm-hmm. i would highly suggest checking them out yes. i use them yes, pretty yes, yes, regularly yes. and uh i've been impressed it's uh, fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, They're wonderful. They're fantastic. They're great. great people. Yeah, they are actually just really cool people. We just hang out with them regularly. Yeah, even though they're in Ken. And Ted's yeah. just like, nope. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, they were proud to sponsor us <laughs> a while ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, guys, we do need to announce our giveaway winner. Obviously, we the announcement went up Monday evening. Breaking the fourth wall a little bit, uh, but Crazy yeah. T, congratulations to you! Thank you guys all for entering. Uh, Crazy T, you get to choose a card mm-hmm. from the previous episode, yes. and you will get a Mirrodin poster uh, that we have designed that uh, we're stoked about. It is awesome. I have that and an Amon get poster in my study. Did you hang them up? Yeah, nice. They're command taped. Yeah, my wife hasn't taken them down yet, too. So that's <laughs> a win. <laughs> We'll see. Yet. We'll see how long that lasts. We'll see. I got home and she was like, that's magic stuff, isn't it? (laughs) It's like, yeah. Kevin made them. She was like, "Mm, do you think they're going anywhere? I was like, yeah, in the study. (laughs) And all she said was, hmm. That's marriage, I'll give it another three days. (laughs) That's marriage for you. Uh uh, guys, anyway. we are excited about this episode. Will has done a fantastic job preparing it. I'm putting it all on you. That's not entirely true. I did some, but very little. Uh, we, of course, are going to kick off with our card of the day. Then we are going to be talking about the bannings of both Deathrite Shaman and Gitaxian yeah. Probe and how they mm-hmm. affect metagames and then going into sort of a standard metagame breakdown. Right. Uh, how to read a metagame, how do you adjust for it, those sorts of things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, we then, of course, mm-hmm. have our question of the week and then our very last Dominaria crack packs uh. We should have technically gotten Core 20 2019 uh for this episode and we just didn't oh touche but uh hey. because i forgot to pre-order <laughs> hey, hey it's fine we have these and we need to open them um and i guess you have one more chance of i have one more shot pieing me whoops <laughs> in the face yeah anyway um that's gonna be a good time if it ever happens uh, well i don't think it's anymore. if anybody missed the pie in the face in episode 100 you should really go watch episode 100 <laughs> it's highlight. a good time that's the highlight yeah 100 percent. it's at the very end but don't skip to it <laughs> um <laughs> anyway yeah, i definitely did <laughs> i did like five times it's totally fine our random card of the day guys in three two one temple hmm. acolyte yep temple acolyte uh it is a one three cleric uh, when it enters the battlefield, you gain three life for two. This is a worse version of the one that got printed in, I want to say, Innistrad. Uh, it's just a do, one do, do. mana. One. It's either a one one, mm. but it's for one mana. It comes in, you gain three. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I know what card you're talking about. It's I can't think of the name. Is that right? I don't remember. Um, Beautiful it's, water. It's worse for that reason because I'll explain. You would never play either of them? No, of course not. I think it's Temple Cleric, maybe. Okay. Or something Priest. I don't know. Just do your thing, man. Irrelevant. You you got it. You wouldn't play either of them. No. Because gaining three life for a dude that dies, (coughs) just, it really isn't worth it. I would say, yeah, yeah, I mean, generally speaking, it's not. If if you want to invest mana in an ability or some kind of ETB bonus, there are yeah. far more for one and two that are, there are far better ones for one yeah, and two than getting three life. So definitely. just don't, even in white, even in white, 
Yeah, I'm trying really hard to find a home for this, and I just can't. Because the only thing it does, it gains you a few life, mm -hmm. and it blocks some very early on creatures. Right. And that's it. Well, I mean, the home is I always, mean, the niche is always <laughs> limited, really, yeah, for cards of course. like this. Yeah, Definitely limited, but, like, it's filler mm -hmm. at best. Yeah, right? it's like, it is the, towards the It's not the like you want pack, it. For sure. Um, it is a cleric, which did have some for relevance at some point, but it doesn't really anymore. <laughs> This is from Portal Second Age, by the way. Yeah, it's a really It was card. reprinted in Elspeth versus Deseret. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Um, um, yeah, yeah, just not good. Mm -mm. Just not. Sorry, no. guys. Maybe next time we'll no, get a good card. Not really good. Um, Maybe one day. Well, yeah, we got... Um, what did we get? The <laughs> For episode 100, we got... Wait, was it 100? Maybe it was not. We got Blood Braid one time, which That's was That's what sweet. I was thinking. Was yeah, like that was a good one. Probably. We got a mountain. That was our That favorite. was a good one. That yeah, was great. That's really good. <laughs> All right, so let's get into the main topic, and we're going to cool. kick off with talking about the two bannings from Legacy, yep. uh, Deathrite Shaman and Gitaxian Pro. Both were banned. Hmm? Uh, Got the X. So the ban hammer. Thoughts on this, Will? Um, do you want me to lead off, or do you want to? Yeah, because I need okay. a sip of water. So here's my thing. Um, before I looked at stats, I was like, "Hey." Why are you banning these cards? Mm -hmm. Obviously, Deathrite hits a lot of decks, but it's not like game winning, theoretically. Um, and Gitaxian Probe is great in a couple decks, and that's kind of it. Uh, I, s I soon looked at the stats. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so one deck came to the top as being one that hosts both of these cards yes. as a four of. Mm -hmm. uh, Grixis Delver. Yep. Uh, loves a four of Deathrite and a four of Gitaxian Probe. God it's does it. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so. That was one little like okay, and obviously that's like the deck that is played the most right now. It's sitting at right around twelve percent, mm -hmm. uh, or it was. Um, right, we'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah, we'll talk about right, that in a minute. Right, right. Uh, and so that sort of made me think, okay, maybe this isn't really, maybe this is a good idea. Right. Then you look at Lee of Old decks, which were kind of number two. Uh, of course, they run Death Right. They did not generally run Gitaxian Probe, mm -hmm. uh, but the third deck, Storm, always runs Gitaxian Probe. Yep. And so I started to think, okay, maybe it actually does make sense to ban these cards. As much as I don't think they're game-winning cards, they very clearly give a huge buff to certain decks, and they yeah. were all in in the lead in the metagame. Definitely. Um, I believe the actual percentage, Deathrite Shaman was the number one creature played in Legacy, uh, sitting at 42% of the decks. Wow. Uh, You're telling me the death right trauma was in 42% in of, of the metagame. That's nuts. Uh, kind of insane. Yeah, and then Gitaxian Probe was number six on the spell list. It was not. It was on the top 10, but it wasn't quite at number one. Mm. Uh, sitting at right around 25% of the decks. A quarter uh, of the meta is a lot. A quarter of the meta is a lot. That is, it's worth noting, obviously, Storm took a lot of the meta. And it's always in that sure. deck, so sure. naturally it's going to be there. Uh, but it is still a good bit. Obviously, Deathrite taking it by a long way, though. Yeah. Um, interesting. Uh, I like both of these bannings. Yeah. Um, to be honest, um, Deathrite for a lot of reasons. <laughs> Deathrite gives you so much for one mana. Oh my gosh! Yes. A turn one Deathrite's a really, really solid play. Yeah. Especially in Legacy. Um, any deck that really gets green or black gets to now protect itself against Dredge, Reanimator, um, Storm in some cases, a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, you have mana fixing. <laughs> Aside from that incidental protection, you have mana fixing. You have just incidental life gain mm -hmm. when you need it. Uh, it's such a great creature, and it's 1-2. <laughs> like... That doesn't matter much for legacy, but just no. But like, uh, just to add to this smorgasbord yeah. of overpoweredness, you can't elect trickery it. No, you can't. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> like a it's, yeah. it's hugely powerful. Mm -hmm. It's well known as a mini planeswalker because it basically yeah. is. Um, Definitely. The biggest thing, in my opinion, with Deathrite is that it fixes mana because mm -hmm. in the decks that it was running, it was generally a three or four color deck. Mm -hmm. And the reason the decks could kind of get away with it is because you fetch for a two color land and then you already have your third color on turn two. Right. And it's like, okay, that's a little too good, right? Like, yeah, that's <laughs> nuts. I mean, it's insane. That is, I mean, that's optimal for any three color deck. Yeah. But not every three color deck will hit it consistently. Sure. But Death Ride just knocks that out of the water. Yeah. It says, nah, don't worry about that. It makes you. it a lot easier. Gotcha, it buddy. smooths out the mana. And as we all know, mana mm -hmm. is probably the most important thing in a game of magic. You think? I think so. You're probably right. Unless you're a mana list dredge. 
Well, then screw you for playing a stupid deck. <laughs> <laughs> he is just a little salty. Um, no, yeah, I am. <laughs> I actually like the Gitaxian Pro ban more than Death Rite. That's interesting to me. I value that card so much more than other players. You really do. Here's why. Um, Gitaxian Probe is a free card, and it, it's basically, you basically play with 56 cards in your deck if you play Probe. Yeah. So, statistically, playing a 4 of Probe improves your deck so much. Mm-hmm. It improves your draw of everything incredibly. Um, it also gives you information. So, in those non-rotating formats, Legacy, Vintage, you want to play around the hand more than you do on board you won't see a ton of building a bunch of stuff on board as you will getting card advantage holding spells being tricky with lands up until about turn three Mm -hmm. turn two um and a lot can happen in those early turns yeah if i have a probe and i just get to know if i'm playing safely yeah or if i get to play reckless whatever if if i know you're not holding any counters there's no forcible there's no days nothing like that I'm good, man. Well, I'm and peachy. So exactly, and that's the the tough part, and that's why Storm loved this card is because on the turn they were gonna go off, yeah. they just it's hold also, on to it. Yeah, it's also a free storm. It's count. a free storm card already, yeah. but it also means you get to work with the information. And so if they do counter the probe, then you baited the counter. If they don't counter it, then you know exactly what they have. Right. And so like you clear the path no matter mm-hmm. what, because if they do have the counter, they have to counter the probe. They literally have to, because if they don't then they're just not going to do their thing and then it doesn't mm-hmm. matter. Like, now it's, it's safe. Now yeah. you get to wait until you have it. So like... Until you have your force of will. Exactly. Until you have your backup plan. Yeah. So Which you might just draw with probe and you then you might. just get to play it anyway. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's just... It led to too many broken circumstances. Right. And that, that's what I love about probe. On the... Looking just at the card, draw a card, look at a hand, that's not insanely valuable. But to be able to do it for free, yeah. any deck could play this... Two life in legacy means absolutely nothing. You don't care whatsoever oh, about yeah. two life. Uh, You're gonna lose all your life most likely in one turn. Exactly. So. Like the haymaker is gonna come out of nowhere. Yeah. And if you don't lose it all, you know you're you're going to lose after that. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Uh, two <laughs> life is, is whatever. Um, the things that probe gives you are are far better. And I don't care like what kind of deck you run. Play probe. Play four of. Yeah. In legacy. Yeah. yeah. Up until now, just because <laughs> Not again. Anymore. Again, you draw it. <laughs> you just pitch it, dude. You just you just cast it and you know everything. Yeah, it's um, insane. It's really, really good. Right. Uh, information is definitely, mm-hmm. especially to new players, kind of undervalued. Uh, to veteran players, yeah. it's like the most important thing and for good reason. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Well, I'd say behind card advantage. Behind card advantage, sure. Uh, which Damn. is important to say, Gitaxian Probe doesn't actually generate card advantage. Right. Just it pointing just out, it itself. just replaces right. itself. Right. Uh, some people think any cantrip is card advantage. That's it's, not technically true. No, it's deck thinning, yeah. and it smooths your draw. You want those cantrips, but it's not. It's not actually card advantage. But it's still. It's uh, whatever. Well, it, no, nah, it's not really. It's not but, really. <laughs> well, it is if you think about like the statistics of drawing certain cards. Yeah, think but about like, like that card advantage. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. But like, I'm thinking in terms of like, it's not digging through your it's not like adding a card to your hand or right. anything weird like right. that it's just literal replacing itself which right. yeah it does help but it's like yeah it's less than the 100 sure whatever sure anyway uh do we want to break down where the meta has been and where we think it's going to go that kind of thing or do we want sure yeah just really quickly mm-hmm. um we'll go over this really quickly because will's got a lot of good stuff to get into but uh very quickly Grixis Delver was at the very top, obviously. We already yep. mentioned that. Uh, it ran four of both Deathrite and Gitaxian Probe. Obviously, that is a big hit for Delver. Uh, yep. I'm interested to see. I mean, the deck will still function, I believe. It's just how well it's going to do anymore. Um, because Gitaxian Probe was really good at that deck, yep. right? Like, it was kind of insane. Deathrite, I think, while very good, isn't as big of a hit in the Delver deck because you kind of want the instant and sorcery count up anyway. Sure. So, like, you might be able to just replace those with something else. But uh, regardless, it is still going to take a fairly big hit, probably a bigger hit than most other decks. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean. Four color control, which generally is thought of as Leovold control nowadays, mm-hmm. uh, I think is going to take a pretty big hit because it was a four color deck with Death Rite. 
And as we talked about, Deathrite very easily kind of smoothed out that mana base. I think mm -hmm. now that's a big hit for that deck. Uh, it's not like you really just want to put like Elvish Mystics or something in it. Like it doesn't do the same job. So right. Right. Um, it's not going to work uh, as well. Birds of Paradise is like the closest thing to like fixing, yeah. but I don't think that's good enough. Like <laughs> the value is not there. Well, it's not as good. Yeah. It doesn't have the upside of like you know graveyard hate or interaction and things like that and then buffing right. your life total or sinking theirs so like there's it's just not yeah, doing it there's enough. a lot bop doesn't give you yeah obviously i mean um so i actually think this will have a big hit as well and that's that was second best in terms of metagame how many decks there were it was about 10 percent, nine to ten percent okay um the next one i believe was what was it i said it earlier and I can't think of it anymore. Is that you asking for help? Yeah, Storm. that's me asking for help. Storm, thank you. Uh, Storm really just got hit by Probe, which is an important card in Storm, mm -hmm. as we just talked about. It really, really helps on the turn that they're going to go win. Yeah. So um, I'm interested to see. I mean, Storm will still function. There are other of cards course. that they can use. Of course. Uh, it's just not anywhere close to being as easy to go off with Storm anymore. I think... I think Storm will be just as powerful, but they will not win as many games. I th So here's my question, though. Okay. Do you, in Storm, specifically the Ad Nauseum Tendrils kind of Storm deck, do you run more Cantrips in place of Gitaxian Probe, or do you run Hand Destruction so you can mm. clear the way? Cantrips. Do you think if so? You're, yeah, I think if you're if you're a Storm deck and you want to Storm to win, yeah. um, yes, you can protect yourself with duress for instance yeah, yeah. if we're in in uh legacy probably duress yeah definitely um, duress but i think if without that information i'm throwing everything at my storm count that's fair you know yeah storm is storm already is such a all in kind of thing. kind of protected ish combo yeah that it's harder to disrupt a storm's it is. I mean, Fluster Storm does a great job, but really, well, Fluster Storm is the big one. Excluding Fluster Storm, yeah. of course. Force like, of Will doesn't quite do it unless right. you really time it right and get right before exactly. the actual ten. The experienced player will know what to counter in Storm, but there are yeah. at so many points that Storm does all these little things. I think the most important sure. one though is like Yogg's Will, right? You just always that, counter the Yogmoth's Will. That or Past in Flames, probably right. Well, but Past in Flames doesn't really get played too much in Legacy. Um, I guess, yeah. I mean, it's generally Ogmas will, but like either one, yeah, because that's the card that really puts it over the top. Sure. Um, so Even like, so, though, you can get a nasty yeah, I mean, turn off. Absolutely, yeah. you can generate so good. much Counter. value. Um, sure. So yeah, it's it's absolutely a very very skillful mm -hmm. uh, matchup. But I do think yes. now they're going to have a harder time winning, exactly as you said. Yeah, just um, as powerful, but their win percentage I think will take a little bit of a hit. Probably yeah, not as much. Yeah. Um, as other people might expect. I don't know. I don't know, and I haven't given this too much thought, what decks mm -hmm. I think will start kind of taking over if anything changes drastically. Um, I still think, like, Sultai control will be good. Maybe yeah. not quite four-color control, but Leovold is still a very powerful card. It generates yeah. a ton of extra value. Um, and so I think that they will still have a strong competitive deck there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Storm, like we said, is still going to be there. And I do think Delver is still going to be there. But I just don't know if it's going to be at the top of the meta anymore. No, I'd expect Delver to be around 4% of the meta maybe. Yeah. Just because, again, it is a you can come back in yeah. a simple aggro deck losing eight spots. Yeah. Because you have one very simple goal in mind is to flip Delver, turn... I guess two, right? And then yeah. And then the other thing with Delver too is generally most of the cards are like cheaper oh yeah and so like it's oh, yeah. kind of a good like if you're on not i say a budget but like you know what i mean we're talking legacy but like it's kind of a good way to intro right. into legacy because delver's not an expensive card a lot of the cards are just cantrips and so like yeah. you can pull those very very quickly yeah. and put together a grixis delver deck and it's actually okay yeah um so i think that we're still gonna see it be a large part of the metagame for yeah. that reason um, I think Dredge probably is in a great position. Yeah, Dredge just got better. Yeah. Now that <laughs> decks that just incidentally were protected aren't anymore, Dredge, yeah. I think Dredge can opens, run them over. Yeah. It's still, Pretty I mean, Dredge always has an issue after sideboard. That's the downside with Dredge. Of course. But game one, it's going to have so much of an easier time. Oh, yes. Um, oh, always. Yes. Uh, but yeah, yeah, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. We'll keep an eye on Legacy, obviously. There is a tournament coming up, Will, as mm -hmm. you mentioned, uh, yep. at GP something or other. I believe. Did you say? I don't know. It's coming up later this know. month, I believe. And so uh, we will see how the metagame pans out right. uh, as see time goes on. And, of course, we'll revisit at yeah. some point soon. See what happens. Yep. Um, 
Any? Did you expect any other cards to get banned or restricted or um, unbanned or anything from this announcement? So that's like a lead-in question. Yeah, it is a lead-in question for, my, for the main so, topic. So okay, the one I've been seeing a lot of guys. What the heck? <laughs> Seriously, Stoneforge does not need to be unbanned in modern. <laughs> okay, yeah. like people, I see posts. Like I saw two or three today. I was telling you earlier. I was on Instagram today and I saw like two or three posts. Hey, unbanned Stoneforge. It'll be fine. No, it won't. No, <laughs> I don't think Stoneforge, so. Stoneforge, as we discussed before this episode. Let's drop a turn two Stoneforge. Let's okay. get a Batter Skull into play. Let's get Gideon okay. of the Trials out. Let's okay. on turn four go ahead and drop that Jace the Mind Sculptor. And okay. then on turn five, Gideon Jura just to sure up the game. No. Yeah. That is not cool. That's <laughs> like, so here, there's a Planeswalker <laughs> that's going to fate seal me. There's a Batter Skull that's going to eat me. There's a Gideon that says, You can't lose. <laughs> Sheesh. Yeah, it's just too good. Yeah. Um, like, and all, all of that's, of course, conjecture. Yeah, but of course. I mean, but like, that's a very real possibility. Right. And that that's, that is just assuming that old Cobblade, because those are the only cards that yeah, were yeah. banned out of Cobblade that exactly. Um, um, we just today thought of getting at the trials to smooth out turn three, because like, what was their other turn three? I guess they played Squadron Hawk turn three. Maybe. Yeah, but I like, guess so. But like, I don't know. I mean, now you just need do to that if they want, but go for it. <laughs> yeah. But I'd rather just not be able to lose. I right. guess that just seems put good. Put a million swords <laughs> on Squadron Hawks. <laughs> Guys, it's just yeah. too good. I don't think yeah. that uh, it should be unbanned, but it seems like there's a lot of hype behind it. There is, and I think people think it's safe now because Jay's got unbanned. Because that it, makes it more unsafe. <laughs> is right. the thing. <laughs> I think you could do one or the, well, we said this before too. You can do one or the <laughs> other, but not both. Yeah. Um. And without a, another Modern Masters set to sell, I mm -hmm. don't think that Wizards would really no, risk so. Modern like that. I don't think so. Um, a lot of people believe that Jace got unbanned to sell packs because Modern has evolved in such a way that turn three is the big turn. Mm -hmm. So Jace is really fun to play with. This is what Wizards said. It's a fun card to play with. Yeah. We want you to play with good cards. Here's Jace. Um, I am a little more optimistic. I'm like... That is true first, and then they were like, "Well, he's still a hundred bucks. We don't want him to be like three hundred. He's like back up to a hundred still now. Is he? Yeah. Now, um, he's not that good anymore. Um, I mean, he sees a lot of deck lists now, but it's not like he. I mean, he's great, but he's not he's amazing. Not, right. He doesn't break modern like no, he, not anymore. Right. Um, but <laughs> I believe they want you to play with fun cards first. They had that thought. Then they were like, "We should reprint him to flood the market with more Jace." I hope you're right. I think that's. I hope what you're right. I, I will back that up because we don't know for sure. But right. I hope. I just look. <laughs> Buddha teaches you to see the good in every situation. Let me appropriate someone's culture a little bit more. <laughs> I used to do Tai Chi. That almost works. <laughs> right. Sure. Anyways. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Unbanning Stone Forge. I don't know about that. No. Um, Anything on your end that you think? People, there was a lot of buzz for Chain Whirler, Goblin Chain Whirler. It should be banned. Yeah, a lot I of don't buzz. Think so. I did. I would have like a month ago. I, I don't. I didn't want another banning, and that's kind of yeah. I mean, Wizards nobody doesn't want that want either. They said it a bunch of times. We don't want to ban stuff out of standard. Um, and I don't necessarily know because here's the thing, like. Red Deck Wins isn't going to be good in a few months once Kaladesh is out. Yeah. It's Bone Mat Courier's... Got, there's a bunch of cards it loses, right? So it's much less good. Is that the yes. right English well, to Well, and say as we've talked that? about, it's or what worse. we will talk about very soon, is that, like, it's not as good as we kind of thought it was. I mean, it's no. good, but it's true. not quite true, true. as takeover -y as we thought. True. What Chain Whirler does, however, is exclude a lot of fun decks from standard. Yeah. So you don't get to play really any token deck right now, which is the big one for That's me. That's so sad. I love yeah. token decks. Sapperlings has a lot of tech right now. Yeah. That, that's cute. It's not probably not a tier one deck. It's cute, but you just don't get to play Sapperlings because Chain Whirler on turn three makes sure that no Sapperlings hit the board. Yep. You know? Yeah. I mean, it sucks, but that's definitely the case. Yeah. And it also pressures Planeswalkers pretty well and things like that, mm -hmm. just with mm -hmm. incidental damage. So, like, control decks get a hit against, you know, like, sure. it's it just has a good mm -hmm. a good matchup most of the time. Mm -hmm. So it does, it does preclude a lot of decks. Yeah. 
The three color cycle was supposed to reward playing a restrictor mana base mm. with its, you know, that, that gin, the shade, yeah, whirler, yeah. steely champion. Yeah. Um, which it does, but red deck wins being a monocolor deck <laughs> just absolutely loves it. Crushes yeah. it. Um, Thankfully, green. Green's there. We'd be there, green. Tell you, we're here to never win. Although, <laughs> according to Maybe. the data. All right. <laughs> So let's get into that. Let's um, do it. A lot of pomp and circumstance before we get into this, but uh, <laughs> needed to be said. Bannings are scary and important to talk about. Um, so we're talking about metas today. I wanted to start. It's episode 101. We should educate the new players. Yeah. What the heck do we mean when we say meta, Kevin? We are talking about the current state of whatever format we are discussing, I guess is the best way to put that. Yeah. The, the climate of the format. The climate of the format. It is, to put it even more simply, what decks are the most popular, what cards are the most popular, what you can expect to see, <clears throat> your expected results, yep. sort of. That's the meta. Um, so, uh, an example of cards influencing the meta, Death Rite's bannings. I'm yeah. going to read a direct quote from Wizard's article about banning Death Rite. Deathrite Shaman's abilities automatically protect against offbeat strategies without requiring deck building concessions the uh, the rest of the metagame would have to make. Yeah. So what they're saying is the game, the format, doesn't have to change for this card or for to plan against these certain decks because yes. of this card. Yeah, yeah. So the meta doesn't change. It's kind of more rigid. Mm-hmm. And that's what you don't want <clears throat> in a competitive fluctuating game like that. Essentially, you want every deck to have a deck it's not good against. Yeah. It's sort of the idea. And sure. Deathrite just kind of made it too easy sure. against certain decks. Yeah, you want you want enough metagame data to be able to plan for something, but there's always levels of uncertainty. And yes, there always is, no matter no matter yeah, if Deathrite's banned or not. Of course. You don't know if you're going to play against a Tron deck or not, but... Yeah. Well, whatever. There's always uncertainty, but cards like Deathrite make it a little more predictable almost too predictable yeah right definitely okay uh so now the death rights out how did death right even become so popular how did how did meta evolve really that was a question i asked when i was kind of writing this um and to me it came down to two big factors in magic how metas kind of shape out um the card pool which is kind of obvious what cards are you allowed to play with uh storm as a deck archetype is in three technically four formats right now <laughs> if you count mono blue storm which is fun and cute uh, <laughs> so we'll also say storm is in every format but it works far better in vintage and legacy than it does in modern even though it's still really good in modern yeah. and talking about why that is obviously comes down to the card pool yeah would there's you just say? better cards for storm and vintage yeah absolutely so storm is way stronger there mm-hmm. so the card pool influences them better second is how easy is it to play out the card that I want to win the game with? Right. Right? Your your deck building process and your number one goal in Magic is always to win. So your deck building should kind of always move towards that goal. Yeah, of course. Right. Forward your game plan. Yeah. So what card do I want to win with? If it's really easy to play, maybe I should do that. If it's not as easy to play, maybe I shouldn't do that. Yeah. So the example we thought of was Emrakul is yeah. illegal in three formats vintage legacy modern however you see it a, a lot in legacy not yeah. as much as in vintage and modern some reasons for that it is super easy to play in vintage and legacy however it's competition in vintage is is wild yeah right? there's a lot faster ways to win yeah. is the idea you get to win on turn one sometimes turn zero in vintage <laughs> and cool requires a little bit of setup upkeep you might say sure right you need at least a turn yeah. <laughs> so at least one <laughs> uh, but sometimes in vintage that's you know that's that's not good enough <laughs> yeah in some in some cases some um in legacy it doesn't have all the competition really so yeah. you get to you get to play your sneak and show show and tell whatever funky ways you want to play with Emrakul, you can kind of do that in Legacy a little better. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Modern, it's even harder to get Emrakul out. Yeah. Again, it's the same card. It's in, this, it's in the you know, same card pool, but it's not as easy to use. So it's not... It's not going to pre- like preclude that... Preclude? It's I not know, that's the word I game. used, but I realized I might have been mistaken. No, no. <laughs> it's, it's, it doesn't forward your game plan as easily as another yeah, card. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah. So that kind of influences on the onset. Mm-hmm. What is in the meta and how that kind of shapes up. Um, 
So, if we know what wins, Kip, mm. uh, we'll talk about some ways, I guess, the cream rises to the top. Why? Um, why is the top? Why are the top decks the top decks? So, they tend to either be faster, have better top end, uh, or their win condition is more effective. Those are the, the things that I can think of. Sure. Um, faster decks would include, like, from 2009 Jund, <laughs> they're way faster. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, 2009 Jund. I guess. Or, I meant Birthing Pod, but oh, okay. Jund is better at the top end. That's right. <laughs> um, yeah, but Birthing Pod, they're way faster at getting to their big scary things than other yeah. decks. Yeah. I guess the example today is Red Deck wins. It's way yeah. faster than it's any faster. other deck in standard. Right. Um, their top end being better, uh, you can talk about the Scarab God versus some, I guess, Gifts decks, where th- the Gifts decks, God Pharaoh's Gift, get a lot of tokens, a lot of, like, uh, Embalm creatures back, mm-hmm. a lot of From the Graveyard into the Battlefield stuff like that. <laughs> they play around that mechanic a lot, and the Scarab God does that on its own, but it's... Its pool is much bigger. Yeah, Because exactly. it touches every graveyard. Uh, it comes out quicker. Yep. It is harder to kill in and of itself. So it's win- It's more effective, really, yeah. than other win conditions. Um, yeah, so... Oh, I forgot my point after that. Win conditions are important. They, oh, that's <laughs> right. Thank you. They are important. So with the goal in Magic being simply to win, the most common way to do that is to beat someone's face in. Yep. Just relentlessly punch them down, tip your cards to the side, and their life total will drain. That's the that's the easiest way, right? However, <laughs> however, there are some cards like uh, Approach the Second Son mm-hmm. that just say, Hey, buddy, you, if you do this thing, you win. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. And a new player might go, Wow. That's amazing. That's it? That's all I got to do? Sold. I'm not doing anything else. That's way, <laughs> way too good to ignore. And you're kind of right. Uh, any card that says do this and you win, in my opinion, is a card that needs to be respected. It's worth looking at. Yes. Into. Yes. Because some cards like that will work a lot better than others. Yes. Right. Um, the approach works ish. It's not super consistent. Not super consistent, right? <laughs> um, so the more simple route, always the beat your face route, is usually like the best one to go with. Well, and that's why we say. see to sort of look at it at a higher level. That's generally why we see a lot of when a new set comes out. That's why aggro tends to take over in the beginning, mm-hmm. and then later control True. decks tend to take over. And it's because the easiest thing is to go and straight beat mm-hmm. face. And it's the easiest to figure out, first of all, and so people are able to build decks very quickly and very concisely because that's all they have to do. Right. But later when you figure out, okay, well, a lot of people are playing creature decks. If I play this many removal slots with this, you know, approach of whatever, then I can't think God Fairy's gift. Is that what you're talking about? Um, we're talking about approach of the second son, right? Oh, approach of the second son. I thought you were talking about gift. My bad. <laughs> Sometimes it's in gift, honestly. I was going to say. Um, but, like, the idea being, you know, it's a little bit more of a complicated deck. You have to kind sure. of figure out and metagame a little bit more. Whereas with the aggro decks, it's really just, I just need to beat face. So here is my deck. It doesn't really matter as mm-hmm. much what the other decks are doing. Right. So just to kind of bring it to a higher level. I added. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> so... If those decks are the the most consistent, the aggro decks, yeah. Uh, if they're the hardest, or if they if they get to kind of ignore the rest of the meta, which in some cases they do, a mm-hmm. lot of cases. Another example I think of uh, is in Popper, how your mono blue and mono black decks really just got to make themselves better and not answer the meta. Yeah. Um, the best decks will always simply improve on their game plan without answering anyone else's because they don't need to. Yeah. Um, Metas evolve when, you know, the shift starts to happen. So, <clears throat> how do you start the shift? How do you identify the shift? Kevin's absolutely right. S- decks start running more answers or more effective answers. There you go. Uh, so, they force two-for-ones. Um, they force a... Uh, or, or a choice of some kind. Mm-hmm. Uh, decks li- or cards like Doomfall, for instance, uh, force your opponent to, to choose, like, the lesser of... Whatever, you know, they yeah. sac- they exile a target creature that yep. they control, or it's just 
Um, hand destruction. Doomfall's a good card. Yeah, Doomfall's great. That's what I want to say. Wish it was instant, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> or uh, cards like Cast Down. So Cast Down, to me, was not a removal spell I expected to see a ton of when it was spoiled, uh, simply because it just I didn't feel like it, it was as powerful as other removal. Right. It was cheap. But never to return hits more, way more things. And that's what you you generally want the like lucrative side on yeah. removal, and yeah. you kind of want to be able to hit multiple things. Even but. fatal push hit way more. Yeah, cards that were being played. Um, but we see just the need for more answers. Yep. So cast down became a eh, two of a one of mm-hmm. um, in very few decks. Three, um, like very few. Yeah. Uh, just because again it doesn't hit as much, so main board right. it's kind of risky. However. Um, but the deck started running sometimes eight, sometimes twelve removal slots just to deal with the board, and that's not even counting counters. Just to deal yeah. with the board that aggressive decks were putting out. Your Rakdos aggro, your mono red aggro. Really just mono red until a few months ago. <laughs> um, so that's what that's what control decks started to do to kind of metagame for that. Mm-hmm. Um, other decks like Constrictor, like um, Mono Green Stompy, which really is only a deck in Dominaria. Yeah. Like, that's when it started. Yeah, yeah. You know, it gets your Land of War Elves tech, which is kind of... Without a Mana Dork, green just feels really bad. Oh, yeah. But with this, you can s- turn to a Steel Leaf and, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And without and it, it, that wouldn't be in anywhere near as good. <laughs> yeah, Steel... And it dodges a Braid. It's yeah. It's awesome. So that's an example of a two-for-one. If a deck wants to remove Steel Leaf from board and doesn't have, like, a target destroy if it's got burn for instance which yeah. mono red runs burn yep uh it now has to throw two spells at steel leaf whereas other other decks control decks might have to throw one anytime you two right. for one your opponent you are in a not always a good position but that right. play was a good play because like you want them to be, have to burn right. yeah you want them to have to burn extra cards on a mm-hmm. single card of yours that way you in a sense, actually just gain card advantage because they're less likely to have an answer to anything right. else you do. The idea is they expended more resources yep. uh, to bring something more to parity. Yep. Right? If you're up here, to, you know. It's um, good stuff. Yeah. So uh, green decks, other creature decks build a better board faster than mono yep. red uh, with your land of plus big guys into mono green stompy. <laughs> so that was a lot of stuff we just threw at you to kind of bring it back together. Just for a second. Uh, metagames influenced, obviously, by what cards you can play, how easy it is to play them, um, or how easy it is to forward a certain strategy. And usually that is beaten phase. Usually. Standard especially, but... Yeah. Uh, even in control decks, what you'll see is they they want to play this card over here on turn 6 or 7 or 8, which is a long way away. So they have to make sure that they have the early game locked up so that they get to do that for free. Mm-hmm. Not for free, but, you know, they get to do that easier. Um, so cards that help them, or strategies, rather, that help them do that, that's how their meta is kind of yeah. Yeah, forwarded, yeah. would you say? Yeah, it forwards their game plan to get to their answer, right. or to their win con. And once you see a kind of breakout deck or a, a, a trend in the meta, how do you adjust to that? You run to answer things. Mm-hmm. You will identify a weakness in that deck. For a red deck, it's... On the onset, it's not being able to refill their hand. It's not having, like, a late game, yeah. necessarily. Um, with uh, Hezzeret, that's kind of their late game, but you get to exile Hezzeret anyway with mm-hmm. Raskus Contempt and stuff. Um, but generally, they fall to board wipes and things sure. like that because sure. once their hand is dumped, which is kind of the idea with red deck wins, mm-hmm. uh, again, on the onset of it at least, Sure. Uh, if you board wipe them, they're drawing one card per turn. You're just going to outpace them is the idea. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, and what we've seen in the past is that with this current iteration of red deck wins, that's not really the idea anymore. Sure. Uh, sure. But like you mentioned, I think with the rotation coming up and things like that, it's going to get a lot less uh, yeah. proactive in its draw steps and things like that. Definitely. So, definitely. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that changes, I think. Yeah. Uh, red will definitely take a hit. Oh, it's a huge hit. <laughs> For yeah, sure. yeah. Uh, Finally. <laughs> well, it really... Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I know. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk a little second. Um, so once you identify the breakout deck, look for its weaknesses, uh, play around those. Now, it's always a balancing act. You don't want to just answer one deck. You mm-hmm. still want to have your, your winning strategy in hand. Um, that's why control is just a really... It's kind of a safer way to plan for a meta because a counter spell will counter anything. Yeah. 
right? It'll counter uh, approach. It'll counter chain whirler. Mm-hmm. So you can run that and kind of be safe in that realm. You don't have to adjust for too much. Um, the real brewing and kind of sweet spot comes down to how many of this do you run versus how many of that. Do I need fumigate or can I? Or am I better off a spot removal? Mm-hmm. Which is kind of the trend we see, even though. We yeah. have an argument for fumigate and, yeah, and yeah. Uh, settle the that, I find that interesting, but mm-hmm. I mean, it is what it is. Right. <laughs> Clearly, right. they know more than I do, so. Well, apparently. Play standard and teach us. Yeah, right. Anyway. Obi <laughs> Kenobi. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. Uh, so that's that's kind of how the metas shape. A really brief look at how yeah. metas kind of evolve into the state they are and all those changes. Um, standard, obviously will usually have the healthiest meta in that there's a point when most cards will not be viable because of rotation. Yep. So post-rotation is a really interesting time, usually always in standard. Um, but before we get to post-rotation, we can talk about how the meta's kind of shifted out, kind of kind of shaped over the last few months. Uh, we just had Nationals happen. Yep. Which is sweet. Um, but the GP before that was interesting because we saw a <laughs> lot of red deck wins. So, all those magic players that use all the tips we just talked about, probably a little bit more uh, higher caliber, um, <laughs> they planned for that. They planned sure. for Red Deck. Yeah. Uh, so, these, these stats are coming from uh, Magic Online, um, given to us by just a, our regular cavalcade of sources. Yeah. Goldfish, MTG Top 8, uh, The Gatherer, just, if you have the internet, you know where to go. You have the internet. <laughs> um, hopefully you do if you're watching this. <laughs> um, so we'll talk about some of the most top played decks. Uh, Blue-black midrange is where Woo. we're starting off. Um, Blue-black midrange is a controlling deck more so than a midrange deck. Um, a lot of its early turns involve uh, drawing a bunch of cards, sticking cards that give you card advantage rather than threats. So Champion of Wits. Um the the two one why can't i think of it glint sleeve siphoner i think that's the one i'm thinking of the two one black card gives you energy energy and then you can draw or something off of it yeah Yeah. every time it deals damage or enters the battlefield you get an energy you can pay a life and two energy and draw a card yep so cards like that up until they get to the scarab god and once the scarab god hits that's when their deck shifts into I'm reaching into graveyards and I'm pulling stuff out and throwing them at you. Mm-hmm. All the while still drawing more cards. Because by the <laughs> way, they run Torrential Gear Hulk and <laughs> Torrential into Glimmer of Genius is just the tastiest pairing in So standard. good. <laughs> <laughs> Your uh, Torrential Gear Hulk has an, an oaky, almost uh, artifact-ish aftertaste. Uh, what pairs great with that is scrying two cards, drawing two cards and gaining two energy. Uh, that's what we recommend. Anyway. <laughs> Feel free to order a negate if you need to. <laughs> a negate. That's like an appetizer. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, this deck is very strong in the latter stages of the game. Much stronger than red deck wins. So how blue-black midrange adjusted was to give it way more answers in the early game. You get uh, three essence scatters main board now instead of the uh, one essence scatter, one negate, and just mm-hmm. a bunch of other fun stuff. Um, it gets... Uh, all the removal we talked about, Doomfall, um, that card that I forgot the name of, Cast Down. I almost said Cast Out. Doesn't get that. That's a white card. <laughs> uh, it gets those kinds of those spot removal until it gets its scary thing. Yeah. Because red doesn't answer the scary thing. So blue-black players thought, if I can just survive the early game and get to my scary thing, I'm done. Yeah. I got it locked. And Works. They, and they do. <laughs> it's uh, about 11% of the meta, 10.53%. Its win rate is 51%. So a little more than half. Yeah, yeah. A smidgen. That is non-mirror match yeah. uh, statistics, by the way. Wizards gave us these during the BNR announcement, um, and they've been updated since uh, Nationals. So the second most played deck, Black, Red, Aggro, or Midrange. Um, this is the evolution we talked about that yep. Black would have to do to survive in the meta. Or not Black, excuse me, but red. the Mono Red decks. Yep. Um, to give itself more answers because decks like green Mm -hmm. were becoming more aggressive they were better at the thing red wanted to do which was win on board so if red wants to keep doing that they have to address the board some way and black has the answers really brass contempt cast down doomfall stuff like that yep so 
now we see that sort of stuff. Uh, about uh, eight percent of the meta, the same win percentage as um, blue black mid range, fifty one percent, which is you know, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Um, white blue gift, which is again a control deck, sort of combo ish ish deck, um, plays a lot of <laughs> simple draw spells, simple <laughs> counters. Uh, and then approaches it's the sort of like one. your basic control deck. It's just bit. got an interesting top end. Yeah, is what yeah. I like to think of it as. Sure. I kind of don't like the deck though. Do you not? No. Interesting. I know it's I really you weird. Would. I you'd think I would, but it's I don't know. It's kind of boring. Really? I think so. I know it's kind of lame, but I like, don't really like it either. But that's just because I don't like cheeky things like <laughs> approach the second time. I don't like approach as a card. I really don't like approach. Uh, yeah, I don't either. I think it's like just kind of annoying, but hey, I mean, it is a it definitely adds a clock to the game, which is oh, yeah, it does. It's fine. I would but, put uh, approach in almost any commander deck I could, probably. Yeah, I mean, you might as well, I guess, if you've right. got the slot, just throw it in there. But like, you always have it's the a built in wing you can con. take something out. Yeah, you always have the slot. <laughs> it's you, always an extra wing gun, so yeah. it makes sense. Yeah. But like, yeah, it's just I don't know, mm-hmm. it's not that exciting. Yeah. Normally, control is like my thing, but mm-hmm. not in this case, yeah. I would like the uh, blue black mid range deck. I you think you very a lot. Would. So I've been told it is a very good <laughs> deck. <laughs> yeah, it looks sweet. It really it does is look very good. good. Um, it does not have a lot of weaknesses except for the graveyard. Yeah, if you can disrupt their graveyard. You're in a pretty good position. Mm-hmm. However, the best way right now to do that is by playing blue black mid range. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, but uh, white blue makes about six percent of the meta, winning about fifty four percent. Uh, of their games that extra three percent is a big deal just to clarify it is it is uh esper control uh great deck right mm-hmm. now gets to fairy gets a uh, hostage taker gets mm-hmm. cast down or cast out rather these are the cards that blue black doesn't get to play with necessarily um that just kind of give it an edge uh you know how much we like cast out yeah right cast so out's great good. i changed an is it list to america just to play that and uh that one spirit that I can't remember. Flashes and then takes a card from the stack. You know what I'm thinking of? Um, hmm. You know what I'm thinking I of? I know the card. I, I don't know the name. Um, I feel bad. Normally I... It's really good. <laughs> it's We couldn't remember this on another episode when we talked about Fate <laughs> Spirits. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, Spellqueller? Yes! There, there he is. Go. There's the kid. Got I it. Know. Spellqueller. Whew, yeah, sorry, I guys. thought Spellqueller was one of the best cards in Standard. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, it's great. So good. So good. Okay, so, um, but Esper gets all the white stuff that Blue Black doesn't get, obviously. So it's a little more versatile. Uh, however, a little less focus, you could say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so about 6% of the meta, winning about 49% of the games. Uh, Jeskai Control is kind of fringe right now. Um, it comes in at uh, about 5.2% of the meta, 5.3, right around there. Um, and it obviously gets, like, your abrades. Mm. Um, your shocks, other removal like that, which is kind of always what Jess guys wanted to do, is answer yep. things after they stick. Yeah, it kind of it gives you more options to either cast or answer them on the stack or when they hit the board. And if Jess guys doing that, it's in a pretty <coughs> good position. Obviously, it also gets to fairy stuff like that. Um, but it wins about forty nine percent of the meta as well, yeah. or it's it's, it's games. matches right. Then we come to the big baddie. The the boogeyman, <laughs> the scary deck, mono red, at about five point two percent of the meta right now, way less than I thought. Interesting. So reasons I wanted to talk because we all know what it, what it does. We don't need to talk about that. Why did it drop so much from like twelve percent <clears> to five percent? <throat> I think my opinion is that we saw decks evolve to answer it better. Yeah, M 19s around the corner, so there's tech in there that hurts. Red, oh, yeah. a little bit more, punishes yeah. those aggressive players, red mm-hmm. especially. Um, and I think players knew that. So a lot of decks, I think, should have evolved to that Rakdos yeah. kind of mid-range or aggro shell that we see. Um, and the the other mono-red players that are stuck kind of in mono-red are, I mean, it's you're kind of in their twilight right now. Yeah. Right? At the back end of the meta evolution, you should say, this is what happens. Um, so yeah, 5.2% played. Uh, about 49% win rate, which is much lower than yeah. even a month ago when we yeah. saw it in six places in the I was going to say, yeah. Right. Um, Steel Leaf Stompy, Mono yes. Green. Mono 
on. <laughs> so we said that mono green <clears throat> players exist to never win, just to stop red. We were wrong. We're kind of we're kind of doing that, are we? We're stopping red. We're stopping red, yeah, but I think we're also doing better than that. <laughs> it's about four point five percent played, so not a very popular deck. Um, however, <laughs> its win rate is fifty six percent. That's which really is the good. highest in the top eight most played decks. That's really good. That's very good. That's very good. But again, meta just hasn't adjusted. To That's true. Yet. Yeah, yeah. Right. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, and then uh, green black snake, which is obviously a constrictor. Hey. Always an hanging around. Deck. I love that kind deck. of the gray beard of standard right now. Yeah, yeah. has been in for <laughs> like two years. It's a good deck though. It's always a con- it's been consistent. Yeah, right? it's just there all the time doing its thing. Very soon we will have to. Yeah, we'll have to say bye to it. But I really like Winding Constrictor as a card. I just want to point out it's a cool. You have card. about three more months to play with them. Yeah, I just goodbye, my snake friend. All right. So, it's only about 3.7% played right now. <clears throat> Not a very popular no. deck anymore. However, still sitting strong at 52% win rate, which hey. is better than Mono Red. Yeah. Um, because it, again, gives cards like Steel Leaf Champion. Yeah. Which, you put counters on that. Woo! That's going to win you the game. Woo! Pretty Probably. quickly. Or Galta. <laughs> or Galta. You know, just drop a Galta. It's fine. Yeah. Turn four, no problem. Every green player wants Galta for Christmas. It's, it's just a <laughs> fact. Um, so yeah, metas evolve once strategies evolve, once cards are introduced to do that. Mm-hmm. However, there are always going to be cards that influence the meta more than a particular strategy, shall you say. Sure. What I mean is, control is always an archetype, but what makes control so busted <laughs> is what they're building to. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's the scare of God. Yeah. Right. Scarab God is one of those cards that commentators talk about as being like the optimal turn, the turning point in the game is who can land a Scarab God first, and then how the other player reacts. If they don't have a Vraska's Contempt, bro, oh buddy, it's scary. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of ways the game can get out of hand if you don't answer that Scarab God. So when you're metagaming, you have to think about that. How are you going to answer the Scarab God? Mm-hmm. That's a question. So as metas evolve and as you're making a deck and plan for metas that's the thing you want to think about how will i answer x another card chain whirler Ooh. we talked about him yep if you're thinking i'm gonna bring my merfolk <laughs> vampire or token deck to this <laughs> fnm good luck slow pump the brakes <laughs> pump the brakes uh if you see some chain whirlers about a good 30 percent of your deck is unplayable yeah because a lot of your merfolk will die they just cook the fish right up. <laughs> they sear that tuna. There it is. They stake that fang. <laughs> they kill that token. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, man, they 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 wreck that plan. They just run it over. That's yeah. the problem. They run it over and they just they wipe them. They wipe them. It's a it's a board wipe that has three three and first strike after. The thing board. you ha- the thing you have to think about is like to for you to really survive if you're a merfolk deck for instance for mm-hmm. you to survive mm-hmm. against a uh, a chain whirler you have to have at least two lords out. Sure. And by at least two, the reason I say that is because the first lord isn't going to pump itself. It's going to kill itself or it's going to die to the chain whirler. Excuse me. And then after that, all the other ones are going to die because the damage is staying on until the end of the turn. So it just wipes your board. So you literally have to have two cards just to combat Mm -hmm. one card. And that's not even like the only card that's good against it, right? Like that's just one of them, but it's a real, I mean, it's just kind of insane. Yeah. Things to add. Yeah, definitely. So you plan around (laughs) that. Um, If if they cast this card, is my game plan going to suffer greatly, average, or not at all? Yeah. If it's greatly, do you have an answer for it? Um, and the other one, of course, is Vraska's Contempt. Understand that every card in Standard has a weakness. And for cards like Hezaret, for cards like <coughs> the Scarab God, uh, it's Vraska's Contempt. It's one of the most played cards in Standard. Uh, and it is a a must-have for that format to survive. Yep. Um, so if you're playing one of those bomb decks, first off, congrats. You're going to win a bunch of games, probably, if you're any good. <laughs> um, but do you have a plan for losing your threats? How do you survive after the Scarab God's been exiled? Yeah. You know, can you? It's important. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's things to Probably. think about for sure. And that's how the metagame evolves. That's how we get to where we are now. And so continue to do so. Kev, and, did, um, Kev, Kev did I leave anything out? 
Um, I can't think of anything. Did it disappoint the people? No, I don't think so. You threw a lot of information out there. There was a lot. It was a little hasty. I apologize. It was a little hasty. I mean, we only we try to shoot for about an hour max, and we're getting there. <laughs> yeah, fifty five minutes. Yeah, we are. Um, yeah. but yeah, no, I think uh, well said. There's a lot of information there, obviously. But if you do have any questions, by all means, let us know in the comment section below. We're Throw happy mass. to answer them. Throw them at. Um, we can talk about the next big deck. We can talk about yeah. why constructs didn't work. We can talk about <laughs> all those things. Um, all good stuff and obviously important information. Always keep up with your metagame. Mm -hmm. Always know uh, what deck to play. That's how you survive. Yeah. People, I know a lot of people who complain about their homebrew not doing well at an FNM or at a, at yeah. a grinding weekend or something like that. Yeah. A lot of times it comes down to they didn't know how to counter the best decks. Yep. There will always be a better something than your thing. Yeah. Or, well, then something else, right? Yeah. There will always be a... Qui-Gon Jinn said it best, man. There's always a bigger fish. All right. Hate so, to uh, quote the prequels, but... Uh, yeah, anyway. Um, <laughs> but it's guys, just, it's, again... It's succinct. Yeah, and if you... Like we said, if you have any questions, let us know. Uh, we are happy to help. Will is definitely happy to help because he did the research on this episode, as you can tell by my lack of participation. Um, guys, moving on. We we're going to talk about very quickly the question of the week. So mm. we asked last week, uh, what standard deck do you think is going to start taking over? Very relevant to today's conversation. The Damn. biggest one that we talked about and that we saw in the comment section uh, was Green Stompy, mm. which makes sense. It's the one we've most talked about recently as well. Uh, it's just got so much support right now. It's Definitely. kind of insane. Uh, the thing it doesn't tend to do very well I would say uh, it, relevant to this conversation is it doesn't necessarily answer other threats outside Certainly. of outpowering them. Certainly. Um, so it does well on board. It's just if they have an answer for your big dude, that's kind of tough because you really sure. don't have other than playing more big dudes. Uh, so that gets a little bit tough, but that's definitely a very strong deck, I think, right now. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody mm -hmm. said Scape Shift. Gotta love it. Uh, <laughs> some people said just Goblins. Uh, which I think, I mean, there are some support cards, but I don't think it's good enough. I it'd don't be either. tier two. Maybe. I think they do a lot of cute, cute things. Yeah, I mean, it'd be I think fine. it'll be playable. It's tier two for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fun. I mean, um, my my pet brew right now is probably going to be a tier two deck. So yeah, yeah, yeah. What was your pet brew? Um, it is um the uh got oh my god <laughs> um gutter snipe. Oh, yeah, yeah, the gutter snipe deck. Jeez. That deck's sweet. Uh, nobody thought mentioned of, that. thought of a clever name, but I couldn't think of what it was right now. <laughs> Maybe I have it written down. I don't know. But, yeah, it's a gutter snipe deck. Yeah. Yeah, it's a sweet deck. Um, some people said just more burn, which I think we talked about. It's probably going to get a little bit worse, but uh, it still would be good. Some people de did say burn wizards, which I think is interesting. That is that's um, curious. I talked because to wizards said, lightning is a thing. Yeah. And that's a very good card. I talked uh, to a guy who said that his mono blue merfolk wizards deck has been nigh unbeatable really yeah and i didn't talk about a list and i'm super curious i yeah. got busy when we were talking though i couldn't i'd be like, interested to know up. Yeah. um some people think mono white white weenie those kinds of style decks are mm -hmm. going to be a good thing um i kind of get where they're coming from just because there's some really good just mono white cards the benelish marshal or whatever yeah that's just a lord for no matter what your right. team uh is really good and i mean i think it's fine but i don't think it's going to be quick enough I think mono green just outpaces it. Yeah, for sure. Right? Um, like, you do in white get your answers. You, know? you do. You get your cast outs and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, maybe. I guess we'll see. Yeah. But I feel like if you're going stompy, you go hard stompy. You know what I mean? And like, well, white's always gone wide, though. Yeah, that's I mean? fair. Although, um, oh, white also has that new one mana exile that we don't oh, think is good. but it's not very good. But against Galta, it's good. Against Galta, Think about yeah. that. But you're still, like... I don't know. I I don't like that because you can Cause throw, you have to take a hit from it first, and it's like that's a big hit. Well, of course, <laughs> but once you remove Galta, because you can fight their other things on board. What was it? Blazing something? Blazing hope? Blazing, no. no, no, something weird like that though. I don't know. I mean, maybe I don't. I, I just don't see it being that good. I think it'll be fine. Yeah. Um, the last one I wanted to mention was, and this was a joke by S M Woodruff, eight. Okay. Uh. Joda control, which I think is funny, uh, because Are you Joda's sure the card. Yeah, he said, yeah. Um, <laughs> Joda, if you don't know, is the legendary creature that lets you play anything for Wooburg, which is powerful, but not in standard. 
Right. Uh, as it turns out. You, you're going to wait five way too turns slow. to do your thing. Yeah, it's not good. Good, um, good luck. Yeah, but anyway, thank you guys, obviously, for answering the question of the week. The next one is kind of an open-ended question. What should be what should be the next unbanning? Mm-hmm. Uh, if anybody says Stoneforge, I'm going to get you. Are you Kev? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do, of course, now come to our crack of packs. These are the last Dominaria packs sponsored by Grand Slam <sighs> Comics and Collectibles. My one last shot at uh, getting you with a pie in the face. Now, here's the thing. Did we specify when you get your gold card, you pie him, or is it the first to the gold card? I don't know that we specified, actually. Well, what's your next gold card? Because I guess you can... Well, no, you're still on your gold card. That was from a long time ago. Right. I don't know. I will I will let you pie me if you get... Okay. I think it's just if you get it. I think that makes sense. Because it's not like it's yeah, going to happen very it's often. It's got to be a competition. Well, yeah. But okay, but that means if I get Steel Leaf here, <laughs> I pie you again. Oh, man. You see what that is? Yeah, I see what that see means. What I don't know. We'll figure it out depending on what we get. <laughs> All right, here's what we're going to do. I what forget which one is which. That's uh, the land. By the way, my gold card is Squee. Mine is Steel Leaf. Are we flipping? Yeah. I think it's because that's the land, right? Or the yeah, there will creature. be a land. Yeah, yeah. Oh All crap! Right. Actually, legendary creatures are gonna mess right? this Unless up. Unless it's the rare. Unless it's dang we'll it, Dominaria. Way to mess All right, it up. We'll see what happens. All right, three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> Both got legendary creatures. Mine's good. Three, two, one. All right, we didn't get it. No. Nope. Although we did both get sagas. That's yeah, pretty cool. that's actually kind of cool. Um, um <laughs> that's how I, we should do it from now on. That is. That makes way more sense. Um, um, I think I just would take. So my rare is the mending of Dominaria. Uh, which is an interesting card, but I don't necessarily like it in draft so much. I do think Slimefoot is kind of amazing. Oh. So I would take Slimefoot. This is the card you need to play against Blue Black Control. Phyrexian Scriptures, <laughs> people. It's the answer. First chapter. Put a plus one, plus one counter on top. Uh, on top. Sorry. <laughs> on top of your hat. <laughs> on up to one. I don't know why I had so much trouble. On up to one target creature. That creature becomes an artifact in addition to its other types. Two, destroy all non-artifact creatures. <laughs> That's pretty good. Three, exile all cards from all opponents' graveyards. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's great against Scarab More God. champion of wits for you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, um, Esper Approach. You need to play this card yeah, or that's I'll good. punch you. <laughs> um, it's not what I take. I don't think. I'm definitely taking Slimefoot. So. I-, I might have to take Baird. He's good. He's Vigilance. Good. Creatures can attack you or a Planeswalker you control unless their controller plays one for each of those creatures. He slows um, the opponent down a good bit. Yeah. I think that's pretty good. I think it's better than Phyrexian Scriptures in limited. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. I like it. We both ended up taking our legendary. Hmm. Which hmm. is better? Slimefoot or Bard? For limited? Yeah. Probably Slimefoot. Probably Slimefoot, yeah. He, st- he kills board parity by creating 1-1s, one so yep. there's nice. He also has a butt ton of synergy in this set, so. Yeah. I mean, Bear um, does. Bear does, too, but green-black as always. <laughs> it's I love green-black as a color combo. I do, too. Um, I don't know. I always kind of shoot for it. I think the first time I drafted, uh, what set was it? It might have been, like, right? Amon Cat, maybe. Mm-hmm. I drafted a green-black deck, and it would was at, amazing. With that spider. Yeah. The scurry spider. Oh, so good. The big, long-legged spider. Spider. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, it was fun. Deck. Um, I guess next time, though, we get to open core 2019 oh. and pick new gold cards. Do you know what yours oh. is yet? No, I don't. I feel like I know what it will be. What do you think it is? I think it's going to be the Gigantosaurus thing or whatever it is. I forgot about Gigantosaurus, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I feel like it just makes sense. We don't normally go for Mythics. Otherwise, I'd say like Crucible is going to be mine. But um, You can pick Crucible. <laughs> it's fine. What if I got it first? I mean, how bad would that feel, though? Um, I feel like whipped cream hitting my sweet, supple face. Yeah, supple. Mm. Has anyone ever described a face as being supple? I wonder. I have, 100%. As a joke, but yeah, I totally have. Because I don't know that's... Yeah, supple really doesn't work. No, I mean, it's not a good descriptive word for a face, no. but that's what makes it good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of It Resolves. We are going to wrap this one up, I believe. Uh, But yeah, good times. This is a long episode. 
<laughs> Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> My name is Kevin. My name's Will. This has been It Resolves.